According to the CDC, about one in 10 Americans have diabetes, about 90 to 95 percent of them type 2 diabetes. It most often develops in people over the age of 45, but more and more children, teens, and young adults are developing it too. Toro's internal medicine physician, Dr. Skyler Williams, is here to talk about some ways to, to manage it, maybe prevent it. Good morning to you. So this is really how your body processes food, turns it into energy, and it, it, it doesn't work right? That's right. You know, diabetes occurs when the body is unable to regulate the amount of glucose or blood sugar in the body. Normally, the body produces a hormone, and its name is insulin. And really, insulin's job is to keep the blood sugar at an ideal level. But in patients with type 2 diabetes, the body is not responding normally to insulin. And in other words, the body is resistant to insulin's actions. Um, this leads to high blood sugar levels, which can cause other serious health problems. So what are, what are the risk factors besides being just, you know, over the age of 45? Well, you are at risk or more likely to develop diabetes if, one, you have a family history of diabetes, two, you have a personal history of gestational diabetes, that's diabetes diagnosed in pregnancy or pre-diabetes, um, three, if you are over the age of 45, as you mentioned, and lastly, if you lead a sedentary lifestyle or have obesity or are overweight. And, and, you know, just another reason, we always hear about the importance of getting the right amount of sleep, which helps you exercise more, which helps you sleep better in this, this cycle. But, but the exercise element of this and, and staying active is, is really important? So important. Probably one of the most effective ways to manage diabetes is by getting active. Exercise helps to reduce the chances that your body will become resistant to insulin. Um, it's also important to develop a healthy eating plan. You want to eat a diet that's high in fiber, low in carbohydrates, and low in saturated fats. You know, if you're overweight or obese, try to lose some weight. It's going to help as well in managing diabetes. And then lastly, talk with your doctor. Um, your doctor lets you know if medications are necessary and other treatments for diabetes. It, it strikes me that this blood sugar, you know, getting it checked is, is really a function, isn't it, of your regular checkup at your doctor? That's part of, of the, the blood test. So, you know, for people who don't, um, who don't have a regular doctor's an annual doctor visit, the, the issue it seems is this is a way to tell you, hey, you're pre-diabetic as opposed to, I don't feel well, I go to the doctor years later and then, it, you know, it's, it's too late, you've already got it. Oh, uh, you are 100% right. Um, it, a, part of, a part of your routine health maintenance visits with your doctor will include being screened for diabetes. And that's where, um, we, uh, for a lot of patients, we're able to catch people who have pre-diabetes. That's being at risk for developing diabetes. And that way, we're able to implement these measures sooner to help prevent or delay the progression to becoming a diabetic. And, and forgive me, we're almost out of time, but you said something very interesting in the commercial break, and that is this: you deal with this in the hospital, in clinic, all the time. One, how commonly? I mean, diabetes is one of the most common diagnoses and probably one of the top three conditions doctors see patients in clinic for. So, um, so important to make sure that you're plugged in for your routine annual physical so that you can be screened for it. And then if you have diabetes, it's important to keep visits with your doctor generally every three months. That way we can help continue to screen and prevent um, any diabetes related um, uh, complications. And, and treat it along the way. All right, Dr. Skyler Williams, thanks so much. Appreciate it. No, thank you for having me.